as a fan of it, it is there any limits to localism at all? Because if I look at some of the big existential political problems facing the United Kingdom, one of the ones that one of the ones that I get most concerned about not getting the attention it should is housing and, and homelessness. And you look at things like the extent of the housing benefit bill, because so many people are stuck in the private rented sector, can't afford to buy, can't afford, can't access a, a social home. The number of people in the country that are living in temporary accommodation just now and all the knock-on problems that, that that creates. I could go on and on and on, but the answer to me is that somebody somewhere needs to start building a horrendous number, an enormous number of new social homes to address the cost of living crisis so many families are faced with. Can that, can that be done with localism being such an embedded value? Or surely you have to have some policy areas that are national strategic priorities, like building the houses the country needs. Where's the balance? Yeah, so I, I think that's right. And the argument that I make in the book is explicitly not an argument that local is good and national is bad. I think that's a, a you know, this idea that Westminster is rotten and corrupt and beyond the pale, and therefore we should ignore it and just pile our, our time into... Um, local action and, and local control. I think that is a device that is designed by politicians to disguise the fact that they don't know how to fix the overall system. Because I start the book with a story about Wigan Athletic, my own football club, that was um, sold off to uh, an owner in Hong Kong. It was used as a plaything, um, seems to have been transferred to hide a gambling debt, although the real real story that will probably never be known um the upshot of it was that it was sold approved by the EFL sold um to a new owner who took ownership and within a few hours had taken a much loved football club that had stood at the center of our town for over 100 years and put it into administration and we nearly lost the lot and my experience of going through the year that we spent battling to save Wigan Athletic was not that, you know, lots of people locally stepped forward, our community raised money, our council was superb, our local paper was incredible, and the team players came forward and helped us to fundraise. That, that was certainly part of the story. But the other part of the story was the national systems that should have been there to protect us fell one by one. At worst, they were utterly hopeless. Uh, at best, they were utterly hopeless. At worst, they were on the side of the wrong people, the people who were trying to destroy our football club rather than the people who were trying to save it and invest in it. And that taught me that there is a huge role for national government in what comes next. The problem is that national government hasn't been doing it for a very long time. So take housing, your example, which is also one that is a priority for me and for any Labour government will be um, in, in the next few years. Um, you know, I, I was in Burnley recently with a group of um, uh, local local community activists and political leaders, business leaders, who could all name you the two landlords who've bought up large swathes of the housing stock. They're letting it out to vulnerable residents. They're able to claim inflated rates of housing benefit because it's supposedly supported accommodation. They provide no support whatsoever. Those lives are being ruined and entire communities are being blighted. And they were completely powerless to stop it. Well, the job of national government is not to micromanage who gets a park bench. It's to close down a system that is allowing the people who extract and take and destroy to stop the people who are in it for the long haul, who have skin in the game and a stake in the outcome, who are trying to build and create and invest from doing so. And I said to them, my promise is that by the end of the first term of a Labour government, we won't just have stamped out things like this. But when you start to go step forward and build the better town that you believe in, you'll feel the whole system pulling in behind you. So the government has a huge role on that, has a huge role to play in terms of working with like-minded governments to deal with the trade policies and the lack of inaction on climate change that is causing frequent flooding and undercutting people's wages and family stability. There's a huge role as well for the government to say, look, these are the national priorities that we have to deliver. We've said we'll invest in retrofitting 19 million homes. For example, it's right that national government shows leadership on that and sets the tone and the pace and the scale of the change that's required but it's not us who are going to retrofit those homes it's going to be councils and businesses across the country who do it because they know where those homes are they know where to start they know how to find the local labor that will allow that money to flow back into the local community and so I think the, the way of thinking about it is not a zero-sum game between local and national but a genuine partnership 
for the first time perhaps in our lifetimes a genuine partnership between different tiers of government and the people that we're supposed to serve.